So following my Cheat Engine tutorial, I was asked, is it possible to use Cheat Engine on CMU? The answer is yes. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Cheat Engine in Zelda Breath of the Wild on CMU so you can get infinite arrows or change the value of any item you have in your inventory, like having 255 giant ancient cores or changing the number of key items in your inventory, like spirit orbs or Korok seeds. So the key difference with finding values on CMU is that you have to set your value type to byte. Typically, you would scan for 2 byte, 4 byte, or 8 byte, the default being 4 byte. To scan for values on CMU, we're going to be using byte. So we're going to scan for 31 spirit orbs, and we're going to go spend some right now. So now we have 27 spirit orbs. So we're going to scan for 27. And now we're going to scan for 23. So here we have a whole bunch of values that are associated with our spirit orbs. So we're gonna go through each value and see which one of these changes our spirit orb value. It's not that one, it's not that one, it's not that one, it's not that one. That's the one, spirit orbs. We'll delete the rest and we'll just change this to 255. So let's do the same thing for Korok seeds. Here's Hestu in the Korok forest. We have 71 Korok seeds. So we'll go into Cheat Engine and we're gonna scan for the value of 71. We're gonna to talk to Hestu, give him a Korok seed, and now we have 70 Korok seeds. So we're gonna scan for the value of 70, spend some more Korok seeds, scan for the value of 68, and now we have a list of Korok seed values. So we're gonna grab all of those, and we're gonna try them all out. And there's the value for Korok seeds. And we'll just set that one to 255 as well. Let's also do this to give ourselves infinite arrows. In our inventory, we have 255 arrows. So we're going to do a first scan for 255 for an exact value for a value type of byte. Then we're going to shoot one arrow and scan for 254. Shoot another arrow, then scan for 253. Shoot another arrow and scan for 252. And now we have six addresses that we can play around with. We'll select them all and add them to our address list. To find out which value is the one we want to play with, we can go through this list and change the value of our arrows to see which one is the one that is for our arrow value. It looks like it's this one. Next, we're gonna right click on it and select find out what writes to this address. When we shoot an arrow, a piece of code should show up in this window. And this is the code that tells us to spend one arrow when we shoot our bow. We're gonna right click on it and select replace with code that does nothing. Now, every time we shoot our bow, we don't spend a single arrow. And this works with all arrow types. Let's try to change how many rupees we have. So here we have a bunch of values for our rupees. And this might be an issue because the type of value is a byte, it can't go higher than 255. If we're trying to change our rupee count to be more than 255, that's gonna be an issue. So these values are stored in sequences of 255. You can see if I give myself 255, it adds 255. If I give myself 256, it rolls back to zero. And you can see it removes 255 from my inventory. Alternatively, we can just get a very high value item, set that to 255 and sell it. For example, we have 248 giant cores, selling 220 of them will give us 44,000 rupees. Then we can just go change the value of our giant ancient cores back to 255 and then sell some more. So we can also do this to find our stamina and our health values. To find our stamina, we're going to do a first scan for an unknown initial value. And then we're gonna hop up on a wall and spend a little bit of stamina. Then we're going to scan for a decrease value. We'll climb some more, scan again, climb some more, scan again. And we're gonna keep doing this until we have just a few values left. So now we're down to seven addresses with the value of 32. Every time I move, that value goes down a little bit. So these are the values we have for our stamina. It's important to know that some of these values are just visual representations of how much stamina you have, and some of them are the actual value of how much stamina you have. We can play around with this by increasing the value just a little bit, 
and seeing if that actually changes our stamina. So we can see here, my stamina is going down, it's at 80, now it's at 75. If I change it to 100, it replenishes it. One thing I can do is I can just freeze that value so that I never go below that amount of stamina. That's not really going to work because there are some things that make stamina go down faster. And if you change a value fast enough, Cheat Engine might not be able to switch it back to the value that you want it to, especially if the address for that value changes. We don't want to freeze this address. What we want to do is find the code that's making us lose stamina in the first place and disabling it. So we're going to right click on this value and select find out what writes to this address. And when I move, some code should pop up on this window. There it is. So we can see here it says count 32. That's 32 times this code was run when I started spending stamina. If I spend stamina again, this count will go up. There it goes. So this is the code that makes us lose stamina. What we're gonna do is right click on it and select replace with code that does nothing. And now we can run and we don't even have a stamina bar. And that's how you get infinite stamina. So we can do the same thing for our health value. We're going to scan for an unknown initial value and we're just gonna go take a little bit of damage. And we'll do a scan for a decreased value. We'll lose a little bit more health and scan for a decreased value. Lose a little bit more, scan again, and we're gonna keep doing this until we get a few values that remain. Okay, we've got our list of seven addresses and we're gonna see which one changes our health value. It's not that one, it's not that one. That looks to be it. It looks like our max health here is 32. So what we'll do here is we're gonna find out what writes to this address and we're gonna go take some damage. And this is how we find the code that tells the game to give us damage. So we're gonna take a hit right now and some code should pop up. There it is, count one, count two. That's the code right there. So we're gonna right click on it and replace it with code that does nothing. And now we should have God mode. Yeah, now we take no damage. So let's see if this works with our own bombs. It does. We are now invincible and we have infinite stamina. There's a lot you can do with Cheat Engine, but you should know that most games on CMU have a community pack that you can download and it has all of the cheats preloaded for you. You can go to options, graphic packs, and click download latest community graphics pack. And when you do that, you can access all kinds of cheats and mods without having to use Cheat Engine. The community graphics pack for Breath of the Wild has infinite durability, infinite arrows, infinite hearts, infinite abilities, infinite stamina. These are all things that you'd have to do manually with Cheat Engine. With a community graphic pack, you can just check the box and it will be there.